to me, learning reimagined is exactly what education should be and should always be. It should take into account who our students are. It should personalize their education um, for their needs. And then it should address the needs of our community by taking real world problems and using our students as problem solvers. Learning reimagined looks deeply at the human side of learning. In the music classroom, we encourage our students to become more independent thinkers and learners. It's not just about learning an instrument. It's about teaching a child how to be a creator, an innovator, and an advocate. Learning reimagined to me means making our classes completely student-centered and using innovative approaches to engage our students as people. What that means for me as a language teacher is that my students are the content of the class. When we learn Latin, we talk about students' lives and we talk about student interests using the Latin language. Last year we brought together a team of ninth grade teachers to reimagine the ninth grade experience for our incoming freshmen in the 2017-18 school year. And that team of teachers made uh, some choices about how they could change instruction um, to humanize, personalize, and problematize learning for our students. Get them grappling with real world problems and becoming leaders in the University City community. Welcome back everyone, my name is Gary Spiller. I'm here to talk to you about humanizing learning for all of our amazing students in this uh, awesome school district. This year, just as every other year, we're gonna be focused on our relationships and make sure that we are engaging our students' hearts in order to enable their minds. How are we gonna do this? Number one, we're gonna work on becoming a more trauma-informed school district. Number two, we're really gonna be focused on mindfulness this year. Mindfulness for our students, but also for ourselves. And three, we're working to be a more restorative and just community as we reduce harm through our disciplinary practices. Why am I excited about Learning Reimagine? I'm excited because it gives us the structure and the energy to help our children develop the skills they'll need for the 21st century. I'm particularly excited about the humanizing aspect of it. As a psychologist, I know how important it is for kids to develop the soft skills and um, things to work together as a team. I'm excited about Learning Reimagined. I see it as a lens through which we view everything we do with students in the district. It's not a new curriculum. It's a set of values and a way of thinking. And to me, Learning Reimagined is a way to uh, strategically look at the key components of honing in on what is important to education. So we've got problematizing, personalizing, and humanizing. Uh, to me, the most important is the humanizing aspect of it. It really is a partnership that's bringing together all the resources of our community. It gives us a chance to humanize learning and really care deeply about our kids. It gives us a chance to personalize learning, making sure we're taking care of all the individual needs of all of our kids. And most importantly, it gives us an opportunity to problematize learning. That means we're getting in the community working on real world problems. I'm excited about it and I think all of our students will be engaged and have much more joyful learning with Learning Reimagined. When we think about the three pillars, the learning and reimagined three pillars, that is humanize, personalize, and problematize, we're excited about all of the pillars. But I think this year, one of the initiatives that we're most excited about is our project-based learning initiatives. These are outstanding because it will allow our students to connect learning to life and will allow them to engage the public and to display some of the fine work that our students and our teachers are doing this year. Learning Reimagined will be realized beginning this year. We have to build upon a lot of great work that we've already started as we work to humanize, personalize, and problematize learning for each and every child that we serve. So you will see flexible seating spaces, you will see an enhanced focus on mindfulness and also restorative practices. You will see new curriculum at the secondary level around biomedical sciences and also Project Lead the Way. Um, you will see Lego robotics actually in every kindergarten classroom, new literacy materials for our elementary schools. So rich activity here in the school district of University City. So as we are working to create that modern learning experience for every single child that we serve, I am just ecstatic to begin this journey with you to build upon the great work of the past as we look towards the future. I will also be wearing another hat as a mom. So excited to have my daughter start in kindergarten at the Jackson Park Elementary School. So looking forward to a fantastic year and I hope that you share my enthusiasm 
and my excitement. It's going to be an amazing 2017-18 school year. Um, we're going to call this meeting to order and I'm just letting everybody know that we are live streaming tonight. So if you speak, know that you will be on live stream. Um, could I start to, with a um, motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, announcements. Student rep. Good evening, everyone. The 2017 FAFSA opened up on October 1st. U City High School held a FAFSA frenzy on October 3rd to help students and parents fill out their applications. If students need assistance with completing their FAFSA, they can contact any of the counselors at the high school. On October 2nd, a few high school UCHS students stood and sat in on the First Amendment and protest law panel discussion with Washu Law Professors and our city defenders. The UCHS Hall of Fame dinner was held on October 13th. Some UCHS students were invited to meet and discuss leadership with their mentors. There was a successful homecoming parade that led to the football team where the U City High School football team won a game against Jennings. Later in the evening, the high homecoming dance was held. On October 26th and 28th at 7 p.m., UCHS will be holding a fall play titled Triangle. The play will be centered around the historic Triangle Shirtless Factory in 1911. Tickets can be purchased at the door. Thank you. Superintendent announcements. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, the Hall of Fame inductee ceremony and homecoming activities took place last Friday and Saturday, respectively, and both were a huge success. The Hall of Fame inducted 11 new members. A special thank you to Marlon West, who served as our um, keynote speaker, who's also a current inductee and an alum. Also, we want to thank the entire communications team for their support of this amazing event. On Monday evening, I hosted the first community strategic planning meeting at Jackson Park. It was wonderful to engage with our community as we move toward creating a workable plan for the coming years. It's not too late to sign up for the next community strategic planning meeting, which will be held on Saturday, October 28th at 9 a.m. at the University City High School Library. I will also engage with district staff on October 24th. The high school hosted its open house this past Tuesday evening, October 17th. You may have noticed the promotional Believe in You vibrant, colorful yard signs. The event included performances by the jazz band, theater program, and high energy performance teams, along with, with refreshments made by our University City High School culinary arts students. Also on Tuesday evening, the district's elementary schools hosted their annual kindergarten open house. Many prospective parents took the opportunity to visit our schools, meet kindergarten teachers and principals while taking part in age-appropriate activities. Tomorrow, October 20th, I will be attending the 2017 National Coalition on School Diversity's fourth annual conference entitled A Struggle We Must Win, Advancing School Integration Through Activism, Youth, Voice, and Policy Forum. Not only am I an observer, but I'm also a presenter on trauma-informed schools and school integration in collaboration with Emily Love, who is with Alive and Well. The conference is in New York, so I'll be flying out at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Plan to come out and support our students next Thursday, Friday, or Saturday evenings, October 26th through 28th at the University City High School Fall Play Triangle. Um, the play should be fascinating as it portrays the 1911 Shirtwaist Factory Fire in New York City. The play starts at 7 p.m. on all evenings. Okay, School of the Month, Brittany Woods Middle School. So um, we started last month and we're going to start continue this year with highlighting our Schools of the Month. And we really want to emphasize the why we do what we do and making sure that our students are front and center in everything that we do. And we are really working to have um, our students present to more authentic audiences about their work. So I'm very pleased to have sixth grade students from Lincoln and Duke team. They have been working in, um, on a project-based unit, and that unit centers around the following questions. How can we, as city managers, design what U City looks like in the future to create a positive social environment? 
Students have written a plan um, detailing the social and environmental issues that they would like to choose. They also had to explain why those issues were important, um, why they were an issue, and how they would work to solve it. Students created a map documenting the ecosystem that they chose to focus on in UC, and the map demonstrates the changes over time that may have occurred in the ecosystem. To kick off this event, um, the students were pleased to have interim city manager Charles Adams um, who came and spoke with our students and spent some time with them. So they're smiling, and I know they're ready. So I'm going to call up our Brittany Woods sixth grade students, and Mr. Shostak, Ms. Mueller, I don't know if you want to say anything to get them started, but the stage is all yours. by year. By year. Each year we needed to graph it. We needed to have at least 10 data points, seven in the future and three in the past. We needed to have seven in the past and three in the future. We needed to have at least three in the future so we can get an averaging and better understanding of what our population would be like and also so that we can figure out ways to preserve that population. What you're seeing now are pictures of the Green Center taking us out to see the three ecosystems of our school, the prairie, the forest, and the wetland. After this expedition, we picked one of the ecosystems to focus on, and using Google Earth, we looked at what the ecosystem looked like in the past, what it looks like now, and using those two data points, 
We projected what, it, what we think it will look like in the future and used all of that data to come up with a solution to preserve the ecosystem. In ELA and social studies, in ELA and social studies, we're writing an essay on an environmental issue and a social issue. For part of our essay, we're writing a city plan. In this city plan, we're writing what we would change in New City. In our environmental paper, our environmental part of the essay, we're writing how we think our city would could protect our ecosystem, our ecosystems, wetlands. In our social issue part of the essay, in our social issue part of the essay, we're, we're choosing a social issue through WebQuest. A WebQuest is a series of websites that include demographics, crime rates, and schools. My social is inter my social issue is entertainment. I didn't choose my social issue through WebQuest though. I chose it through a personal experience from going to other city cities and seeing what they had there that you did not have. I learned that a university city is way more diverse than most cities in St. Louis. I learned how to manage my time wiser. I learned that surprisingly, the poverty rate in New City is high relative to that of Missouri. I learned that there are a lot less forests in New City than I thought. I learned, I learned how to plan my future environment. In ELA, we have been working on circles. We have been doing circles every Monday and once a week. In circles, Ms. Grove will ask us a question before we start off, and she will pass us the object around. And we do circles also to know when it's our turn to speak and respect others' options and opinions. We do circles to get to know each other, and we also try to build a community in circles. Over here, we have Mr. Adams talking to us about his job. And in those four pictures over there, we have the sixth graders working on their communities, communities built out of recyclable materials from the maker's kit that WashU provided us through Ms. Ga Ms. Jamie Gilligan. Before we had worked on our buildings, though, we had to ask ourselves, questions. Who does it benefit? Who uses it? And how can we provide them what they need? On Thursday, October 26th, in the Brady Woods Library, we'll be holding our City Improvement Expo. This will, all, it was, this will give you a chance to show you what we've been working on for this last month or so. There will be two sessions, one from 8.15 to 9.15, and then also one from 11.15 to 12.15. If you have any questions, ask the four event coordinators. Thank you very much, sixth graders from Brittany Woods. We're going to get your photo by the backdrop so we can have it to memorialize your event, and we'll be sure that you get a copy of it. What a great way to explore community and the importance of planning and thinking about our wonderful ecosystem. Job well done. members um, we can acknowledge them if you guys can please stand so that we can acknowledge you as well thank you for bringing us here <laughs> mr. Shostak Ms. Biddy and Ms. Mueller thank you
So we have quite a few um, recognitions today, and we're going to go ahead and get started. And Carolina is going to assist. So when I call your name, you can walk over to her, and she'll hand you your certificate, and then we're going to take a photo with the entire board. So first, we have the University City High School alumni class of 1966. This class, represented by their president, Richard Schenker, donated $3,000 to provide flexible classroom seating for the ninth grade academy. The school district of University City strives to deliver a modern learning experience that prepares students to meet the demands of an ever-changing world. As part of learning reimagines three pillars of humanized, personalized, and problematized, classrooms and other student areas are beginning to take on new shapes with flexible seating. The University City Board of Education recognizes the University City High School class of 1966 for the generous gift that will impact high school students throughout their new flexible learning environments. We have attending us, President Richard Shanker. Give him a round of applause. Larry Carney. And Gail Goldstein Needles. exercise their First Amendment rights to take action. A peaceful u World community protest was thoughtfully planned and organized by students on September 18, 2017 at Boston Circle. According to the students, u World means that they are aware of or awake to the issues around them and want to affect change for a better community. Concerned about local Delmar Lou businesses, these students plan to sell u World shirts to benefit merchants impacted by the protest violence. The University City Board of Education recognizes you both organizers, including spokespersons Adriana Albert, Malik Johnson, along with Christina Eason, Madison Henderson, and Aaliyah Mitchell for having the courage to take action on their beliefs in a peaceful and respectful manner. Adriana, please join me. Give them a round of applause. Here. Thank you, Bella. Well, On September 24, 2017, University City High School student artists participated in U City and Bloom's plein air painting competition. Winners received prizes donated by Blick Art Materials. Plein air is a mid century, a mid 19th century French painting style. The University City Board of Education recognizes the following students for their participation in the 2017 U-City and Bloom plein air competition. Destiny Martin for first place, Andrew Emmer for second place, and Ashlyn Jenkins for third place. Let's give them a round of applause. Other 
participants included William Austin, Shariah Butler, Kyla Cross, Jay Morrow, Kathleen Murphy, Brandy Redman, and Gordon Stubborn. Let's give them a round of applause. also want to acknowledge retired university art teacher, the Tony Taylor, for coordinating the student participation at this event, along with the support of District Visual Arts Coordinator and University City Art Teacher, Marnie Clanch, UCD and Bloom's Executive Director, Judy Prane, and UCD and Bloom's Board Member and Plenary Coordinator, Joe Seltzer. And I know Tony's here with us tonight. Let's give him a round of applause. be limited to four minutes and that you please speak to issues. The board cannot discuss personnel matters or individual student concerns in public sessions. The board and superintendent will not immediately respond to questions prior to conducting the inquiry. However, responses will be provided by an appropriate person as quickly as possible. Citizens who wish to make a comment may do so during the citizen comment section at either the beginning or the end of the meeting. No comments will be taken from citizens during the meeting, and citizens need to indicate their desire to speak and state the topic of their comments on the sign-in sheet located at the door. Comments should be limited to four minutes. No individual will be permitted to speak more than once. I'm sorry. Um, once during each citizen comment meeting, or pardon meeting. It is our intent to conduct, conduct our meetings in a manner that is at all times respectful to our students, staff, community members, and fellow board members. Lewis. Please speak. Good evening. My name is uh, Fred Lewis. I am a alumni of class of A1, and I'm here to speak on just a couple of issues. Uh, one primarily is uh, the athletic department. <clears throat> I've been here several months, uh, actually several years, addressing the uh, state of athletics in University City. I am uh, concerned, as usual, with the direction we have been in and we are going towards. It is unimaginable to have a, a department such as University City that has been so um, outstanding in athletics to be at a point that it is right now. As you know, our football team, we did win two games this year, but nevertheless, that's two games in two years. We've been outscored 95 to 980 on the football side. Generally, all our sports are on par, at least 50% of losses. And that's been a cycle of several years uh, now. And my attempt is to see and, and, and be a part of a system that graduates our student athletes where they are college ready and are, are efficient to perform and conduct themselves in a regular setting after high school. 
So that is my main concern. Uh, my other concern is just the, the struggles I have over and over again with just doing the right things and trying to be a part of a system. It is so time consuming, so stressful to have my heart and soul in this community. And at every opportunity, it seemed like it's being pulled out. We have very little participation from alumni, uh, community members. Uh, most board meetings I am attending are very uh, light in attendance. Uh, we need more participation, more understanding of what is actually going on and not having Christmas being offered and we're decorating for Christmas and we we'll always get a Halloween package. The mask has to come off and we need to really be genuine in what we do and how we go about doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Washington.
Moving on to consent agenda. Um, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We have two sets of minutes to approve. Um, can I get a motion first to approve the September 21st minutes? Second. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. May I get a motion to approve, or I just lost my screen, uh, the September 28th special meeting minutes? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Superintendent reports and or recommendations. October is Disability Awareness Month, and our Board of Education is also committed to raising awareness about the month by adopting the following resolution. Whereas there are approximately 1,226 students with disabilities educated in Missouri public schools, and the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 is founded on four principles, inclusion, full participation, economic self-sufficiency, and equality of opportunity for all people with disabilities. And a key method of promoting these four principles is for our schools to recognize the contributions by people with disabilities to our society and provide instruction in disability history, people with disabilities, and the disability rights movement through school curriculum, school assemblies, and other school activities and now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Education and the school district of the School District of University City that the board urges our schools to provide intensive instruction on disability history, people with disabilities, and the disability rights movement, especially during the third week of October and periodically throughout the school year, and encourages other institutions to conduct and promote educational activities on those subjects. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the National Disability Awareness Month resolution as presented. This is an action item. Can I get a motion to approve the National Disability Awareness Month resolution as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? later um, we'll present the highly qualified staff recommendations to the board for approval. Good evening. It is recommended that the Board of Education act to approve the personnel recommendations presented this evening. This is an action item. Can I get a motion to approve the employment of highly qualified certified educational support staff coaches and sponsors um, for the school year 2017-18 as presented? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. Mr. Scheich is um, presenting an item that was discussed at our work session regarding the HVAC rooftop unit number three at Julia Goldstein. Um, we have provided some information and have done some analysis financially so he will be presenting their recommendation to the board at this time. Good evening. Uh, as discussed in the board work session, we've had a, a HVAC rooftop unit at Julia Goldstein that has reached the end of life and is failing. Uh, so uh, per policy, we sought out competitive bids, which are stated in the background of this item. Uh, we are recommending the selection of innovation mechanical, the replacement of Julia Goldstein rooftop unit number three in the amount of $33,000. $167. Take any questions that you may have. Um, this is an action item. Can I get a motion to approve the selection of innovation mechanics for the replacement of the Julia Goldstein roof unit number three in the amount of $33,167? So moved. Second. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Thank you. <laughs> so we next have um, the district's waste contract extension and then Mr. Scheich will be presenting. 
Uh, this item was discussed in the, in the previous board work session as well. We've been approached by our waste management provider with a contract extension. Uh, the information is, is attached to the board item as well, which shows the, uh, the rate schedule as, as well as the estimated, uh, estimated savings that we would uh, experience through extending this contract. Okay. Do you have anything? Okay. That, yeah, so I welcome any questions that may you may have. Can we also discuss this item at our last work session? This is an action item. Um, can I get a motion to approve the rate schedule for the contract extension with waste management for base trash and rate recycling services for 2017, 18, and 19 as presented? So moved. Second. Okay, any questions or discussion? one um, this is related it's not exactly to the contract but do you think we're under utilizing our um, recycling we that's definitely an opportunity uh -huh. um, yes we have room for growth there actually that's something that's being worked on we've kind of identified a, a champion of sorts to take take on the initiative at Brittany Woods we're still seeking somebody in that capacity at the high school on a greater level because um, there's a lot of opportunity there mm -hmm. um, okay we have a, we have better participation at the elementary levels but it, it has kind of dropped off at the middle school and the high school so that's where our most most of our opportunity lies okay. so yes there's a need to strengthen that endeavor sounds like a project-based learning um, <laughs> exactly yes <laughs> Go ahead. so uh, this contract does cover recycling and the issue <coughs> we start discussing is just encouraging more correct. recycling less trash correct and obviously we have been moving in the right direction but we've got ways to go um, we've, actually the elementary schools have kind of pioneered the way as it relates to really separating out separating out their food waste to really filter through some of the stuff and, and decide what what can be recycled. Like I said, the initiative needs a little bit more support on the middle and the high school level. And, and, and the amount of which our waste is going to garbage and to recycle doesn't really affect costs to us. We're just talking about basically getting, uh, encouraging everybody to do the right thing. Oh no, I mean, ultimately, if you're putting something in the recycling bin versus the trash bin, it's, it costs less to haul away because recycling recyclable materials ultimately have a value whereas trash is you're just paying to have it placed in a landfill and there's there's no so return we, we had a much better better ratio of recycled garbage the next time out we could negotiate maybe for a more favorable rate not not just that i mean our rates are pretty favorable ultimately if we if we can swing the pendulum to where we're shifting some more of the trash into recycling yes there, there should be a cost reduction there just because we're Generator, generating more recycling and less trash. Okay. And for the audience benefit, I'm going to just read off with this with this contract for like comparing it to this year versus like next year. There is a cost savings of four thousand eight hundred twenty-four dollars for just this next year, and we get a cost savings even with inflation for the two years after that. So three thousand the year after that, and a thousand one hundred and four the year after that, just for the benefit of the audience. Mm -hmm. and Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. I'm Dr. Ian Buchanan, Assistant Superintendent for the Curriculum and Instruction with Elizabeth Gardner, Director of Instruction. We share a similar in Academy uh, program evaluation to the board. We did provide some preliminary information to the board at a uh, work session. Good evening. I'm happy to bring forward the summer school program evaluation. I know you've reviewed the evaluation for the past week, so I just wanted to highlight a few key uh, points for summer school for this school year. Um, the bit, a few pieces that we really restructured and we found success with. So with our Cinnabel students who are in fourth grade, who are at risk of being retained due to the sanctions of Cinnabel, they're reading two grade levels or more below. We restructured our support so that we can service more students. Um, we did a better job of identifying students, so we actually identified more students than previous years. 
but we actually had greater success. So we had a much higher rate of students being able to be retained. Ultimately, two students were retained this year. We had identified 17. Last year, we would only identified eight and uh, three were retained. So we did much better servicing those students. With this restructure, we were also able to service third grade students who will be at risk this year. I mean, that each of those students made growth. <coughs> so we were able to double the number of students who received special services for reading instruction in summer school. Um, another big focus of ours was restructuring how our eighth grade students uh, received summer school. So the whole focus of their uh, summer school program was transition, so they could be prepared for a successful transition. So instead of focusing on remediation on eighth grade skills, we really enriched them with PBL and re relationship building. And we had uh, 10 more students in the program last year due to really recruitment. And then every one of the 100% of those students were successful. Last year, with a more focus on remediation, we only had 50% of the students successful in all our grades. Uh, the other big area we've restructured and spend time on is with E2020, it's through Edgenuity, and it's our online course offerings. And we spent time understanding the program and really making sure the courses that were in there were aligned with our curriculum and were set up for credit recovery. So what we found last year, previous years, is that students were just taking CAM programs and they weren't set up for success. And so with the work we did this year to ensure that they were really aligned with what was happening in our curriculum and that they were being assessed on Missouri learning standards and not just national standards that might not be our standards, we had a much greater rate of success and we've had a greater interest this year both at the middle school and high school on how to use that in more innovative ways. Those are the three biggest changes we made this year to summer school and the success we saw from it. This is, um, this is an action item, so um, can I get a motion to approve the 2016-17 Summer Learning Academy Program Evaluation as presented? Second. Okay. Questions and discussion? Um, so, um, I like that we saw a lot of movement in different areas, but um, one of the things um, I guess I'd like to know more about or see which, where you guys are at is like, um, aside from just like the mediation, but what about a learning academy that's more um, enrichment based? Like, yeah, enrichment based. Like I, like, I was kind of kid that went to summer school for fun for kids that want to go and do like do extensive reading programs or something like that. So this year we um, worked really hard to work on student growth and we found great success with that last year. So in pre this year, in previous years, we really focused on mastery, similar to school year. So did the students need mastery of end of grade level objectives? And it was really hard to determine if summer school impacted that or they came that way. Um, so this year our focus was really on student growth. And with that, we have really strong data that they made growth. Um, next year moving forward with that, we really have been looking at enrichment opportunities because we also want to see an increase in engagement and joy for students in summer school. So we're exploring that. Um, so we, that's definitely an opportunity for growth. At the eighth grade transition, that really was the focus. And we really saw great success with that. I think another thing that we tried to do this year was partner with other organizations that can provide some enrichment opportunities. So a number of our, of our kids at the middle school specifically had a chance to do a really exciting STEM program. That was not sponsored by us, but we definitely encouraged our students to participate. Were you able to accommodate all students who wanted to attend? Yes. Mr. On the uh, attendance, are we seeing perhaps just that summer school is a tougher nut to crack on attendance just because it's summertime? We did, however, we did see improved attendance see this year in every area. Um, and a lot of that has to do with our teachers work really hard to have the students setting growth goals so they were more uh, involved in their learning and invested. and invested. I would say it is difficult, especially at uh, high school, the students are there because they want to get credit. So it's more important than in the earlier grades. They, the parents and the families look at it as enrichment. So it is difficult if they take a vacation in June and it's already scheduled. We don't want to deny them that opportunity, so it will impact our attendance. Um, it's, it is a much harder 
not to crack, but we did have a great improved attendance compared to the previous year. And our teacher attendance was much higher this year, and that was a big push, and we know that that impacts student attendance. Thank you. And are we looking to, are we looking to expand the number of students that um, come in, and is there, is there room for that? Is that um, you know, on the table possibility? I think for, for us, we know that the summer slide is real, and we know that students lose a lot uh, over the course of the summer. So in the ideal world, we would love for all of our students to participate in some kind of summer enrichment program um, because we feel that the more time, the more clock hours they can have with high quality instruction, the better they are. So yes, we do plan on providing as much opportunity for our students as we can in expand. I know this is, this is budgetary also, but um, to that end, we had talked about this before about having a summer read program. Is that something that we might be able to fulfill this year? Or? It's very interesting that you say that. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, I just sent our ELA coordinator uh, some information about uh, a summer literacy program like 15 minutes ago, as a matter of fact. Scholastic offers one, so we're going to investigate to see if they might be able to provide us with some supports. Okay, great. We also were given oh my God, thousands of books uh, this past uh, summer that we tried to distribute uh, not only to the kids that were in summer school, but to other kids as well. That came from uh, uh, Ellen Bird. Ellen Bird. Bird. Yeah. Um, and she donates books all the time to yeah. us every year. Uh, but she worked really well with us. Uh, Dr. Hines, our ELA coordinator, really wanted to make sure the books were leveled. Last yeah. year we had these books and we weren't prepared to use them properly. So this year, we asked Ellen, if you had a group of people who could help us, we would level these books. And she delivered, she brought 10 people. Um, we had a system set up, we leveled the books. And so Dr. Franks at the elementary school was able to give the books to the right students and send them home on a weekly basis with skills to use. And then all the leftover books we gave on the last day, she had a poetry slam and purging. Um, and that was kind of her culminating project. And it was great, we had great attendance. And so most of books were gone by the end, and we hadn't had that in the past. So we were being much more strategic about those resources. I'm just seeing that uh, in the high school, the math classes are looking like students are really having a problem. I don't know if that's reflective of where they are generally on this, or these uh, students that have been struggling with math their whole careers or what. The majority of the students who are taking uh, the courses in summer school, not necessarily E2020, but in the NC courses, are students who have not had success in those courses. Um, so it is a struggle. Um, this data is pretty parallel to what we see in our normal school year. The race student ratio is better, so they do get more one-on-one -on -one support. It's just it's a really fast pace. I mean, they're there for 18 days, and they're making up, you know, three and a half hours of math. So it's a hard. So thinking about how to restructure this could be important for students who are already struggling. Um, have you set the 2018 Summer Learning Academy dates yet? We don't have the dates, but we we work to do it in the month of June. So it's pretty consistent. Um, I just in terms of your attendance and people booking vacations, um, just an observation that all the years I was a teacher, um, that my awareness of when Summer Learning Academy was didn't really happen until about March, and a lot of parents that were kind of scrambling to get on board. Possibly if you set those dates earlier and publicize them, you may have a little bit less overlap with people leaving town. Absolutely. And we did find that improvement when we moved out of the July window because it used to hover before the July and that didn't work but we can absolutely publicize those much sooner. I'm just going to say we also have a wonderful University City Library and I wonder if there's a way to kind of join up with them with the literacy program this summer because they have they have built-in prizes things like that that might incentivize some of our kids so you know, just and, that. and I see me as well the uh, bookstore model Yes. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Next, we have the um, presentation of the 2017-18 PD manual uh, for approval. There were some revisions that should have been uploaded 
and also um, some questions that were provided um, via Google Docs this afternoon. So I know we took a really deep dive into the professional development plan in the work session in September. So I'd like to provide you just with an update. We talked about how one of our goals is to really monitor the impact PD is having on teachers' um, perception and on their practice. So we're using the new tool KickUp this year to do our PD surveys. Um, I spoke about how we had already seen an increase in staff participation. So we know we want 100% of our staff to, to take the PD surveys at the end of each uh, PD session. Last year, I reported out that we were at about 44% at that time last year. We were able to get to 65% in August. This last month, um, we had a PD and we were at 89.5%. And I have really attributed that to the ease of this platform allowing us to reach out to those groups and remind them to take the survey. Also, we are really building capacity with our teacher leaders. So instead of that message always coming from us or even the building principal, it's coming from their peer, their teacher leader saying, hey, remember we had PD, please take that survey so we can get valuable feedback. Um, another factor we attributed that to is that we're responding to that feedback. We get that feedback, it's so easy for us to respond immediately the next day. I can think of countless, countless things just this week that we've responded to face-to-face and resolve things immediately, and it's really making an impact. Um, we also have seen an increase in teachers' perception of the PD. Um, so in this last PD strand, um, in October on our PD day, 96% of our teachers who took it, I remember that was 89% of our staff, indicated that they learned something new. 86 of our teacher, 86% of our teachers said they were ready to implement it. So not only did they learn it, they were ready and armed and ready to implement it. So we're really gaining traction with our PD structure and with the tool that we're using to monitor it. Because we took such a deep dive in September, I would just want to provide that update. If you have any questions, of course, we'll take those. This is an action item. Can I get a motion to approve the 2017-18 Professional Development Manual as presented? Okay, any questions or discussion? I'm just really happy that you took that deep dive and that you, you got to this because this was an area that we had been had a lot of questions on. Um, this isn't so much uh, when I was looking through the packet before. Has there been discussion or any more discussion on when the PD dates will occur during the week as far as with the school calendar? For next school year? Yes. We've heard, we've heard it loud and clear. Okay. And we know that there were some conflicts that we should avoid next year. The back to back uh, pulling out of days. It's just, this quarter was really problematic for families. So, okay. yeah. And then the movement from the middle of the week, are we looking at that at all as well, or will it continue to be right in the middle? I, I'm so the calendar is preset and it's set two years out. And so we are entering negotiations, but the 18 19 calendar has been set. Um, if it is the voice direction, we can look at that um, calendar, but it will require a modification to what has currently been posted to pick families. Some families do plan way out. Um, we had a preschool family at the high school open house. So um, we, we just need to have guidance. I know that we had talked about making some modifications in the future, but I wasn't sure that we wanted to modify existing calendars that had already been communicated. But if that is the direction, we can look at that. I think that is I would like to. Okay. A couple things. Um, so it's great, and I think it was part of our goals in some fashion that we're getting um, more and better feedback from the teachers on how they feel about what they're, um, you know, getting professional development. What are we doing to um, check the actual impact it's having on their teaching and the implementation? So as part of our walkthrough process, um, we will be able to determine whether or not um, uh, some of our learning strands are being implemented effectively because we'll have specific walkthroughs that are designed to focus on those specific learning strands. That's one. I think the other thing that we expect to see is uh, an increase in benchmark test scores and then also an increase in math and EOC scores. But I think part of it is, and then also the other part is just qualitative uh, information that we get from talking with students, from talking with teachers, and uh, eventually talking with parents. 
Also, the connection we're making so that PD is not just happening on PD days is really embedded on, in their PLC work each week. And then each month, we have a day uh, that's typically been a staff meeting day that we've dedicated for that instructional. So you'll see that as instructional Mondays in those PD plans. And that's really the goal there is for teachers to then have time to talk about how it's working in the classroom, be, bring back those artifacts of what's happening in the classroom and how it's impacting student achievement. Yeah, we will definitely be looking at that's another point. We'll be looking at student uh, student artifacts to really take a look at how um, the learning experience and professional learning is making traction in the district. Um, thank you for all of this work. Um, who's facilitating the national board certification? So the national board certification people are it's through they went to a, we opened up the opportunity for the pre candidacy workshop to all staff. We had seven teachers attend. Of those seven, four have committed to go further. So Kelly Mueller is who's a National Board Certified Trainer. She has workshops that happen, so it's no longer exactly the cohort model, but they have the same support and the same financial commitment from us. So we currently have four teachers who have started that process. The process has changed quite a bit in the last couple of years, so they have three years to complete it, um, and so they could all be on really different tracks. But they're going through Kelly Mueller for as a support and then through Ed Plus for another support. But it's really independent work and we're offering support through Kelly Mueller and financial. Thank you. I didn't uh, go back and compare to prior years, but my impression is that um, this looks more aligned. I sometimes don't know, I think that's an overused word, but this here in this case, I think it does look more aligned with some of the things that we're deliberately trying to do. And I, I saw some things and familiar in terms of learning reimagined as I flipped through this. Um, it's a lot going on. I was just impressed, you know, looking at it like, wow, these teachers are, are constantly learning and about so many things. Um, and I just, I think as we do the marketing and we have this wonderful uh, stuff prepared, it's in some way it's a marketing point it's just that you know we're, we're spending a lot of time in effort on really giving this development educating these teachers continuing the education and just to take it back for me my my view as a parent always was you know darn it's another professional development day the kids are not in school or they're getting an early out but you know now that I sit here I see what's really going on and it's very impressive and um, I think it makes us look good that we're doing so much. I don't know how, you know, other districts, but it's it's a lot and I think we should, I don't know, somehow be capitalizing on the fact that, um, you know, putting a lot into this and a lot of it fits in with our, our new directions. Absolutely. And, and I think our goal really honestly is to go deep on um, professional development as opposed to surface. And so that's why you'll see year-long professional development, and some of those will actually extend through next year. Um, so our goal really is to penetrate very deeply and give teachers time to practice, come back and take a look at work, take a look at data. And then we really wanted to hire some of the highest, um, highest uh, value of professional development organizations in the country, like Buck Institute for uh, Education, like the data seminar organization, and Shiraki Howley, who does great, great cultural responsibility. Okay, now you have to excuse me because I was not at the September work session. <laughs> so if this question just kind of uh, keeps talking about learning reimagined and um, I was thinking about alignment. Now I, I, I can see restorative practices in some of the PD and I see the individualization, um, especially with the balanced literacy. Um, a little bit of problem-based um, learning, I can see it when I'm looking through, like what do you envision this looking like in the future and how do we like really absorb those things in there um, and make them consistent? Because I noticed also like Jackson Park has a big restorative practice focus, but then I didn't see it in the other elementary schools. So that's just a kind of overall general question. So when we rolled out Learn to Reimagine, we shared that a lot of the efforts would be in phases because it would be impossible to do everything district-wide. So there are some um, areas where we're focusing more heavily. For example, the 6th and 9th grade innovation team are focused on pro project-based learning. Um, some buildings are further along with the start of practices because they started that work last year. So their work is more penetrated in it. So the intent is that over time, 
all buildings will have that consistency. But after um, for this year, it was just very overwhelming for teachers, being really honest, to have all of those initiatives all at the same time, all at the same level. So we tried to differentiate the rollout, and so you'll see um, pieces of it in various settings with the intent that over time we'll be building upon it so that we can build capacity across the district. And another point with each of our learning streams and our, all, everything we're doing with PD with our teachers is really to see how to use all three pillars of learning or imagine. So it's not that we do problem based learning just a problem at times. Whatever you're doing in the classroom, we're really helping teachers to see how you use and use all three of those pillars. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor of being the professional development manual as presented? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, the next action item is uh, to approve the resolution and timeline for the April 3rd, 2008 election as presented. Um, do I need to read all this? It is necessary that the board approve the adoption, of, the adoption of a resolution providing the annual election to be held in the school district of University City, St. Louis County, Missouri, on Tuesday, April 3rd, 2018, for submitting the following to the qualified voters of the district. The election of two members of the Board of Education to serve a term of three years. The election procedures timeline, as well as policy BBB, School Board Elections Ballot Placement, Policy BBBAF2, Candidate Declaration, Policy BBBA, Board Member Qualifications, and Policy BCA, Board Organizational Meeting. Candidates for Director of, on the Board of Education may pick up a packet of information to use in declaring their candidacy prior to the first day of filing beginning November 6, 2017, in the Board of Education office between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. The first day of filing is December 12, 2017, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The closing date is January 16, 2018, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. This is an action item. Can I get a motion to approve the following resolution and timeline for the April 3rd, 2018 election? So moved. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, moving on to board recommendations. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have a recommendation um, to approve the follow-up letter for submission to the Metropolitan Sewer District um, as presented. Uh, Ms. Hendricks, do you want to speak on this? So I think it was it back in September, we had uh, Councilman Smotherson of the Third Ward come and present to us about uh, the project clear uh, for MSD, uh, which is the building of two uh, sewage tanks um, in the University City uh, area. Uh, but before they, were, they came, they did a town hall and they presented uh, a few options, um, which the city of University City was not in favor of. And so uh, we as a school board uh, took a position and we wrote uh, an initial letter. Uh, MSD came back and they had um, other proposals that they have. And so we have um, the MSD project here. There's several proposals, proposals that they um, have outlined. Um, and so we just kind of wrote an advocacy letter, um, which is Dear Board of Trustees, the school district of University City has been following MSD's project CLEAR concerning the sewage tanks to be built somewhere in University City. While the district understands MSD's need to alleviate wastewater concerns as outlined by the 2012 consent decree, in our last communication, the school district of University City outlined concerns the district had with the original plans. Since the initial meeting between the community and MSD, several options have been identified that may be more beneficial to the community. 
The district contends that it is up to the community to decide what is ultimately best for University City. However, our consensus is that whatever plan moves forward must take the following into consideration. One, any structure built should not be in a predominantly residential area. Number two, the sewage storage tank should be buried underground. And number three, the sewage tanks must have a quality air filtration system to keep foul odors from polluting neighborhoods. As discussed in our previous letter, any plan that includes removal of university city homes negatively affects both our ability to collect personal property tax on those homes, as well as the potential for losing students and the 3200 in state formula and sales tax revenues. The district continues to be concerned about our community's possible home value losses due to visible sewer tanks and foul odors. The district would like to urge MSD to only consider options that meet the above stated criteria, with special emphasis on option D1, which you can see in the packet, um, that was presented in the clear project packet. Because this option involves building on Heyman Park in an area that does not have an impact on property, residential or commercial, and would not impact the district's ability to collect taxes from property in an already tough financial environment. The district's goal is always to advocate what is best for both the district and the entire university city community. Our hope is that whatever conclusion is reached will be fitting with the needs of our constituents and cause the, and cause the least amount of disruption. Sincerely, Board of Education, School District of University City. This is an action item. Can I get a motion to approve um, the letter for submission to the Metropolitan Sewer District as presented? Okay. Second. I just wonder um, if we should have that number 3200 in there. I don't really recall where that came from, and I don't know if it may be. Scott, I mean, Scott, is, is, would we be better not to name a number, or is it an absolute fixed number? Is it something that could vary by the time the all goes down? I don't think there's anything wrong with saying approximately or approximately. something. Did you want to approximately? It could definitely change by the time a project would be implemented. And those numbers were in the original letter as well. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm just thinking as time goes by, things change, but I don't think I want to say approximately, just that. Make a motion to amend and add approximately before. I'll make that motion. Second. Any other discussions or questions? We have a typo. Um, on the, in the paragraph beginning of the as, the fourth line has the word communities. That's the plural. It should be possessive. Y S. We move to amend communities. Plural. The three communities possessive. Second. First vote will be on the amendment to um, to change communities from plural to possessive. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? And then the second um, second amendment um, would be to add approximately before 3,200. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Um, any other discussion? Oh, and I apologize about that. Um, Okay. So good. Good <laughs> okay. So um, final, the final um, would be uh, the vote to approve the letter for submission to MSD um, with the amendments. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Second citizen comment. This time we don't have any citizen comments, so we'll move on we to. We do. Oh, okay. I apologize. Um, could you please come up? Just state your name and your address, please. Lou Marie, class of 1994. Could you move your mic up just a little bit? That mic, I haven't been able to hear out of it That's as well. Great. If you want, yeah, that might be better. I apologize. Good evening. I'm Lamont Reed, class of 1994, also with the UC Alumni Association. I'm over at Outreach and Community Service. I'm here to relay a message 
from the students of the University Senior High School, some of their concerns. I volunteer weekly at the high school to interact with the children and try to see what some of their needs are. And some of their concerns were lack of support from the teachers. Also, that there, some of the teachers aren't helping them with their work. They're just giving them the answers instead of helping them. And that, that's hindering them, I feel. And a, a major concern of mine is I, I really like to work in, I really work hard in the community with these kids, boots on the ground in the third ward. I have tried to come to the district and try to help with volunteers and my own resources. And I've been pretty much given the runaround and more resistance than support. And I was just wondering, how can we help? We've been hearing that we need more help in the community, we need more volunteers, but when we volunteer, we're turned away. And that's, to me, frustrating because these kids aren't getting their needs met. We haven't addressed the heroin epidemic and the prescription drug epidemic that I know of personally that are going on in these schools. It seems like other things are getting more presence over things that are very, that really need to be addressed. And we've been trying to start rebuilding the sports association. I've reached out to numerous people. We have a plan implemented. All we asked were, could we use one of the facilities we have our own resources. We're prepared to pay for the police ourselves. We, we've asked the district for no money, and we've been met with resistance. And we want to help, but it's frustrating. So I'm just really here, and, the, and a lot of the kids, their main concern was they like the teachers to build a relationship with them because they have issues at home, and the teachers are pushing the button for the FA to come to the classroom instead of talking to the kid and finding out what's wrong, what, why are you acting like this? Instead, it's, you need to leave, you need to leave. And these kids are crying out to me. I talk to them weekly. And I told them that I would bring this to you guys at the next meeting. And I really think that needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I apologize for not knowing that you need to speak? Um, okay, board reports. I have a few things. Um, I went to uh, among the strategic planning committee, and uh, Dr. Hart Bartley had just spoke about that. Um, the initial core planning meeting was on the second, followed by Monday evening. We had our first strategic planning community meeting at Jackson Park in a full room. Uh, lots of uh, communication and lots of excellent ideas and ideas exchange. Um, the next one will be this Saturday from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Uh, at the high school in the Joyland Pruitt Library. Hope that we get lots of folks there for that one as well. Um, I also sit on the Athletics Committee. I just wanted to give you a real quick briefing on that. Um, the Athletics Committee is led by uh, the Athletic Director, Matt Brooks. There's approximately 15 of us. Uh, there are six or seven, approximately six to seven, that are on subcommittees to drive our goals. Uh, right now, our two biggest goals that we set at the very beginning have um, just about been met. We're working on, for K-12 through athletics, it's basketball season is coming up, so we've started looking into that, and uh, we have that all set up to begin in December. And we're waiting to get uh, approval and, and get all of our I's dotted, dotted and our T's crossed. Uh, but that will be for grades one through six. So there will also be a sixth grade um, basketball league as well. Um, this is a collaborative that was set up by our committee uh, with the district as well as with the city. Uh, the summer sports offerings, they have uh, been working very hard on that as well. The district will continue to offer clinics and the committee is forming additional camps that will be offshoots from the U-City summer program. Again, affordable, organized, uh, high quality and each sport will have a week will run approximately six to eight weeks and I, I just want to acknowledge those people on the the committee because they've been working really hard um, I know some folks may think that it's just scratching the surface but can't can't dive deep into you see what you got on the surface so we're working very hard on that and I look forward to giving you next reports thank you I am the liaison to Brittany Woods, and um, 
they have a pretty active PTO, and I told them I would bring anything they wanted me um, to bring back to the board. Um, but they are having a family night, um, which is an initiative that they have with Wyman to help families. Um, it's the date I think they have set so far is November 20th, and so they definitely need uh, parent and community volunteers. That's one of the, the themes that is said at the PTO a lot is that they need um, parent and community volunteers to help out. Um, so families are also worried about um, communication um, and um, punitive measures at the middle school. Um, so they are um, worried about things that are going on there, and so there's kind of it was kind of a big deal. <coughs> meeting actually um, and so this is what um, I think they kind of wanted me to bring back just kind of a paraphrase is that um, families who may be interested in coming to University City um, may be looking at other options um, if they feel like their students aren't being treated in a manner or they feel like their students are being treated in a manner that feels punitive um, to all students and it'd be nice to have um, a village <coughs> district community conversation around um, what goes on in the middle school and then another parent said that um, they'd be interested in um, having topics around um, gun safety um, and education because um, there are a lot of incidents of gun violence. There was just an incident here in University City where uh, a kid had a gun and hurt someone else is actually um, a neighbor um, for me. Um, so I don't know the family personally, but that is something that happens. And so they're really, um, families are really interested in gun safety um, for, for our children because um, guns are available and there's Missouri's constitutional carry. Um, yeah, so, and then also, um, just really fast, um, this week, um, I invited myself to the high school for the anti-bullying seminar with uh, Lamont Logic and Murphy Lee of the St. Lunatics. I also invited Chelsea. Um, and um, it, it was a very powerful message that um, Murphy Lee delivered to our students around um, not bullying. He said, um, you don't have time to bully if you're focused on yourself. And then he gave um, a powerful presentation on entrepreneurship. And then also as the um, middle school liaison and as a proud um, eighth grade mother, I got to attend the high school open house on the 17th, which was great. Um, there was a lot of students there in the high school that were leading the presentation. Um, my student went on a tour without me. I think he enjoyed it. Um, but it was just um, a great way to um, open up the high school to prospective parents and to let other parents know about the amazing opportunities that University City has. Thank you. Um, my liaison to UC and Bloom, the garden tour and the plein air event were a big success and raised money for UC and Bloom. Um, this Sunday, October 22nd from 2 until 4 p.m., um, they have their Olive Gallery opening. Um, the utility boxes along Olive have been painted and there's a tour of those. So if you want to go to the uh, pool house at Eman Park and uh, have some refreshments before your tour and meet the artists, that's available for you. I'm liaison to the U City High School Pancake Breakfast. It was a big success. Um, a lot of people came out. I think they sold 200 and about 230 tickets. I too went to the open house at the high school on Tuesday night, and it was led by the students. And it was really just such a great way to, to show off our high school and all the amazing um, activities our students are doing um, to further their learning. I went to the PTO meeting at the high school. They are. Um, they're working on academic letters for their students who are high achieving. Those will be presented in November. Um, the PTO is looking to support teachers um, with, with grants. They're, they're running on a pretty small budget, but they're, they're doing what they can. Um, Character Plus, I'm also their liaison. The Alliance STL conference scheduled for November has been canceled. It's moved to March because they didn't have the participation they were hoping for. So we're hoping that that's going to happen in March. That's an opportunity for care providers and um, care clients around the St. Louis area to come together in the same room. So I'd really like to see that happen in March. Um, all of us went to the Missouri School Board Association Conference in October, and that is professional growth for the school board. We all attended some really different and enriching sessions, um, so we're, we're great too. Thanks. Okay, um, and 
in our work session, we will have some time if you want to have a quick presentation of something from MSBA. I'm just letting work directors know that. Um, the policy committee may have met this month and we identified some policies that need to be revised to reflect restorative practices um, and ranked what the priorities were within those policies on working on them. Our next prior priority will be looking in uh, curriculum and instruction to look for outdated policies and um, things that may need to be aligned again to learning reimagine. Um, and that's all I can for. Hi, um, so I got had the pleasure of, uh, it's not within the district, but going on equity walks uh, in a neighboring district. Um, and I presented it to the board uh, about something that we could do to improve the climate and culture within our schools, um, gathering feedback from the community um, as well as within ourselves. Um, I also am on the a liaison for Julia Goldstein, and I look forward to the Early Childhood Fall Festival next Wednesday from 3 to 5. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to mention the MSBA conference too, and I'm glad Lisa that we're going to have a chance to discuss in more detail our notes and impressions. Um, we each got to go to different sessions. There were these concurrent sessions, you know, where you can pick out different topics. Um, uh, one of the ones that really stood out to me was the last one I went to, and it was uh, three relatively young uh, female uh, science teachers from Columbia, and they talked about how they were using technology and doing a flipped classroom approach. They were recording on YouTube their lectures for the students so that in class time they could do their other work that typically uh, would be homework, but they could do it under more guidance from the teacher. And they also had um, the technology piece of it um, where uh, all the quizzes and everything were on online and had structured it in such a way they could all um, kind of move at their own pace. Um, I attended the Jackson Park PTO meeting as liaison, um, and I happened to see uh, one of the parents there that I know from uh, here, which is Dr. Hartley, and I asked her which hat she was wearing. I think she was wearing both, but uh, one is a parent. Um, homecoming was great for me. Um, it started with the Friday um, dinner with the, with the uh, honorees for the Hall of Fame, and uh, I've always thought it's great that we have um, all the pictures up on the wall. I don't know how often students actually stop to look at them, but it's a very impressive collection by now of alumni. And um, Homecoming Parade was uh, a lot of fun, and the football game was won, I think, because of a coaching decision to go for two after the first touchdown because we won by one point over Jennings. It was a really fun game to watch. And the homecoming dance looked like fun too. I stopped in there briefly and it was very well attended um, and uh, well chaperoned. I met some of our younger teachers that were uh, doing that duty. So it was a good, good weekend. Concludes the board reports. Um, upcoming meeting announcements. Yes. Thank you all for coming tonight. Your attendance is appreciated. And um, we will have a work session, which is open to the public on November 2nd. That begins right here at 5.45 p.m. And then our next board meeting will be November 16th at 7 p.m. And we expect to see you all there. Thank you. Okay, now I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed?